Hey everybody, we are going. We have gone live. Thank you for joining us. We've got uh, tonight. We've got Tim of Over the Years is joining me. My name is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, if you're not familiar with Tim's channel, Over the Years, definitely want to check him out. Uh, we're going to you know get things started up here a little bit. Let a few more people sign on. Uh, welcome. Recognize a lot of names that are coming in here. Hey Kelly from Moss Stone Story. Thanks for joining us. Hemlock Lady. Uh, thank you. Uh, Laura Bemos, uh, happy to have you on. I hope you get your internet back. I hate to suck down your data, um, but appreciate you using up your data feed just for us. Uh, we've got um, Michelle at Mermaid Cove Plants and Treasure. Oh, okay, M Michelle is speaking to us in emojis. So my eyesight's not good enough. So I think I see what a balloon, a crown, piece of pizza. No. Are those like celebratory? Oh, 600. Did I hit 600? Sweet. I was, I was at 599. So, oh, I had my eight year old subscribe. So we hit 600. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. That's fantastic. That's what happens when I try to read the chat backwards. So, thank you so much. Um, I don't tend to like watch my numbers all that much, but it is kind of fun when you get those little threshold ones. So, I saw earlier today that I was in the 590 range. Like, oh man, hopefully tonight I'll get to 600. And uh, I did. So that's awesome. So uh, hopefully it, Tim's already hit the magical thousand number, but I'm sure if you have not subscribed to Tim, he would not be objected to uh, you guys jumping onto his channel and uh, checking him out. So if you're not familiar with Tim, we are uh, bringing him onto this deep dive as uh, pretty much a glass specialist, uh, but he's a specialist in just about everything. So it's one of those cases where if you look at his, he's on eBay, he's on Etsy, He's on something called Depop, which I haven't quite mastered yet. <laughs> he's on Grail, so he does clothing. He's He's got a little bit of everything. So it was interesting when you get a specialist or you, uh, somebody who specializes in so many different things, You know, what do you end up doing a deep dive on? And uh, we put our heads together and we really thought that uranium glass would be a fun one. So tonight we're going to be covering uranium glass. Uh, if anyone has not joined us for a deep dive before, if you're on a, your phone or on your computer, you should have access to the live chat. This is not a sale, so don't get excited. You're not gonna be able to buy anything that we're showing in the deep dive. Although I have a feeling a lot of this might be on his sale, on his site, you might be able to buy later, but this is not a sale, but you can still throw questions into the live chat and uh, we will try and answer them as we come across them. And we'll just kind of see how the evening progresses. If you've got questions, throw them in there. So we're at a couple minutes after the hour. A few, a few new names uh, joining up. Uh, Josephine Christian. That's Wait, Josie. Josie. That's my girlfriend. Hey, Josie, how you doing? I, I make all the other resellers feel guilty because Josie is my daughter's absolute favorite. So <laughs> welcome, Josie. Glad to have you on here. Uh, we got Swamp Picker. I think you were also, you got me, I think, to maybe 598 or 599. So appreciate that. So uh, hopefully you got a couple of people jumping on over here from uh, Tim's channel. Our Sandra Runyon. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hey, Scott, Old Curiosity Shop. All right. We got to be prepped, Tim. If you don't know Scott from Old Curiosity Shop, he'll probably be giving you some stump from uh, some stumpers for you. No, no. I, it's funny you say that because when I when I first started watching YouTube, he was one of the the early channels that I watched. You know, before I even really knew how wide the reseller universe was of YouTube. Like I watched a lot of Scott's uh, videos, and he's a, he he's a re he knows a lot, and he's a really cool dude too. So shout out to Scott. Absolutely. And Scott, you know, I would never even think to reach out to you. You are on a, a much different playing field. But if you ever want to be in a deep dive with me, I'd be thrilled to have you. Hell, I'd bump somebody to get you on. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm booked through the summer, but you never know. Uh, Rebel Junk, that's a new one to me. A little something vintage. Oh, from North Central Illinois. Okay. I am actually, for those of you who watch my channel regularly, you will notice... My background has changed a little <laughs> bit. I am in the middle of a sourcing road trip with a handful of other uh, resellers. I am in Paducah, Kentucky right now. I am uh, I'm, uh, recording from a hotel room, uh, but this weekend, I spent the weekend with George, uh, the antique nomad, uh, Misty, thrifter junker, vintage hunter, Jeffrey, the real nifty vintage, and Laura and Mary Beth from Fatbird Finds. And we had a fantastic time. Uh, we'll be doing some live, uh, maybe some live hauls or some haul videos. Had a great time, but it, it made it, I had to make a decision. Either I would have had to drive the six hours back earlier today to make it home in time to do the deep dive, or 
just do it from a hotel. And then I'll just, I turn this into a four day weekend. So I'll be heading back home uh, Monday and trying to hit some thrift stores on the drive back to Chicago. So we're at 7.05. So I want to get our, go ahead and get ourselves started a little bit. Uh, I've killed a little bit of time. Again, thank you for all the people that have joined us. Uh, for those who joined late, do not forget, uh, if you've not uh, been a part of a deep dive, this is a live chat. So if you haven't found uh, the chat feature, do not put your questions in the comments. Those are not being uh, monitored right now. So make sure you're in the chat. And uh, if you have some questions as we go through, just throw them in and I'll try and pick up as many as I can uh, so that we can still keep this and cap this out in an hour. So for those of you again new to the channel, my name is Patrick. I'm a trusty huckster mercantile. Uh, you can find me uh, primarily, I have an Etsy shop. I'm just starting to dip my toes into eBay and I'm on social media uh, through trusty huckster mercantile or TH mercantile. And this is my fourth deep dive. If you like what you're seeing, I have three others that are archived in playlists and uh, I've got another one. The next one scheduled will be on vintage clothing. Uh, so I do two a month, uh, but tonight is uranium glass. And tonight I've got Tim with over the years. So let's go ahead and let Tim, I, I've done enough talking, let you introduce yourself. <laughs> So before I say anything, I do want to make sure that um, I thank Patrick because it means a lot to me to be able to have this platform to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Um, it is kind of difficult because I'm not like the typical antique uh, vintage looking guy, but um, to be able to be here today means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. Um, also, I wanted to shout out to George, too, because George has been a supporter of mine for a long time, the Antique Nomad, so thank you to him as well. But, uh, yeah, my name is Tim. I live in uh, Washington, D.C., and my channel on YouTube specializes in antiques, vintage, and collectibles, as well as everything else um, from vintage hats to vintage T-shirts. So I do a little bit of everything. I am actually on six different platforms. So I started out selling on Etsy first. So I sell on Etsy, eBay, Macari, Poshmark, Depop, and Grailed, six different platforms. Um, my passion is glass though. So a lot of people know me for glass. And the thing is, is that um, I've probably, I've been on Etsy now for a little bit more than two years, I guess. I've made about 20, 300 sales on Etsy and I have also whew, 2300 sales on Etsy and I probably got about almost 300 pieces of uranium glass and Vaseline glass that have sold already um, they want to know what my hat says my hat is a vintage snap-on hat and I saw somebody else want to know what my shirt said it's a vintage Washington DC hat so uh yeah that's pretty much uh me i'm a full-time reseller so this is my career um i love to learn i love to teach so you know I, I basically knew nothing about nothing i mean at all when i first started this my mom uh was a collector and she kind of was starting to downsize stuff so she was like why don't you you know what can i do and i was like all right well maybe we'll sell this stuff so i looked on Etsy and then one thing led to another and I kind of just went down this crazy rabbit hole where I fell in love with I mean I've always kind of had a passion for it, but I fell in love for antiques and vintage items and collectibles so it was a uh, it was a pretty amazing uh, journey to go from like just selling a couple of things for my mom to now being a full-time reseller on six different platforms and the amount of knowledge that I've learned over time has just been crazy and like I'm I'm by no means a, uh, an expert in anything, but I will say that I, I I just continue to learn. Like that's the thing is that like you have to continue to you know pick up something different that you know nothing about, and it forces your hand to to learn. And then learning is probably the funnest part about all of this because every piece has a story. Um, every piece of history is told through these items, uh, time periods and styles and designs. So it's super important. As one of the questions before we get started into the depths of the deep dive is you mentioned your mom. And for anyone who has not seen uh, Tim's videos and over the years, uh, Josie, who's joined us for the chat. Hi, Josie. Uh, she is, makes a frequent appearance on a lot of his videos, but also his mother, Ma Dukes, also yep. shows up. 
And she is always proving to one, she's absolutely a hoot. So if she jo if she joins, I'll definitely want to give her a shout out. But when you were picking up your knowledge, how much of it really was coming first from your from uh, Dukes from your mom versus where were you picking up this knowledge as you became more and more of an expert in this area of glass? So the first thing that kind of happened was. Um, you know, my mom was big into Fenton glass. So, you know, she had a few pieces of Fenton and she had a couple of books. And so I kind of like started from there to me. The biggest thing is I, I love books. Like I have a crazy bookshelf of books on glass, China. I mean, Coca-Cola, salt and pepper shakers, everything. So I just kind of like, that was the start of the love for glass. And then after that, uh, I remember my mom mentioning something about Vaseline glass, right? And I was like, she didn't really know much about it, but she had told me about it. So I Googled, you know, Vaseline glass, uranium glass. And I saw the first thing that came up and I was like, oh man, it's like $4,000. I'm like, I'm gonna, I gotta figure this stuff out. So my, my buddy got me a little black light and like a keychain one, like you kind of press like this. And so she got me that black light um, my, my my friend did and i remember going into the thrift store and i finding my first piece it's actually funny because i found my first piece of uranium glass two years ago about two weeks ago was a two-year anniversary of when i found my first piece of uranium glass and i thought i was going to be rich i was like man this is it i got home i like turned the light off and i shined on it and i was just mesmerized by like the whole aspect of uranium glass and so Obviously, like I started doing the research and it turned out to be like a $10 cup and saucer, but still <laughs> it was, it was the, the excitement that I got. And, and for me, a big part of selling antiques and vintage items is, you know, trying to break down that barrier of the fact that, oh, it's just for old people or, you know, like it's hoarders and stuff like that, you know, all these negative um, stereotypes that people have of these, these items. And so I, I honestly, you know, saw an opportunity in uranium glass to, you know, be crossover appeal. If you watch my channel, I speak about crossover appeal a lot. And to me, I thought that the fact of uranium glass, how it glows and just the beauty of it and, and you know, the story behind it and the talk about it, I thought that there was a very great opportunity as far as crossover appeal was for uranium glass. Well, that actually, uh, some of what you've just said actually ties in our first questions coming up. You mentioned when you talked about uh, Ma Dukes giving you some training and information, you referenced it as Vaseline glass, and then you started talking about uranium glass. So Carolyn Whitney is posting a question, depression, Vaseline, uranium, is there a difference? And if so, how do you tell it apart? And you do not need to apologize for anything. Yeah, and no. You, you are, there is no ignorance here. That's what these deep dives are for. And I started before we went live, I started with Tim with my own level of apologies because what I normally do is I try and do as much research as I can so that I, well, really, so I don't look like a moron when I'm on these shows against an expert. But in this particular case, I struggled even myself to figure out any sort of research or depth because there's so much you that's why i like to do these you know we want people to join please ask questions and so carolyn you've got a great question that leads us right in because tim himself has switched between the two and there is a difference so can you talk a little bit about and she adds depression into the mix so can you yeah. talk a little bit about the differences there so um first of all like like he said don't ever feel afraid to ask questions like i i always encourage people to ask questions because i ask questions all the time that's how you learn and i'm always open so if you ever have any questions after this you can find me on instagram youtube whatever and don't hesitate to ask questions so with vaseline and uranium glass so basically you have to think about this that there is different levels depending upon a collector a reseller a diehard collector etc so technically, uranium glass is, in my opinion, this is my opinion now, technically uranium glass is anything that contains uranium oxide in it, which enables something to glow. So uranium glass has been around since AD. You know, some people say, I forget exactly who it was, but there was, you know, they were using it in, 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 in I want to say it was like some sort of stained glass and like way, way back in the day. Okay. So... 
uranium glass has been around for forever. Now, the difference, you know, obviously we only have a certain amount of time here, so I'm going to try and be as like precise as possible. The difference is Vaseline glass is going to be – okay, so I'm going to show the first example. So this is technically Vaseline glass, okay? So Vaseline glass got its name, I want to say, around uh, the 20s, 30s. So the name Vaseline glass comes – by, by the color so vaseline old school vaseline used to have this sort of color tint to it and that's why this is called vaseline glass now hardcore vaseline glass collectors will only collect vaseline glass okay now as a reseller you might have uranium glass so this is technically uranium glass okay which is green but you might use vaseline glass as a keyword you know, just because there are some people that like both just because they like whatever glows. And I understand that because that's how I am. Now, obviously, this has a different sort of beautiful appeal to it than this does to some people. But in my mind, they're all beautiful because they glow. And then a lot of these pieces, even without glowing, like you see how beautiful this piece is. This is this is a recent shell by model uh, by Flint glass early uh 1900s late 1800s and so that's the difference now depression glass is technically you know is its own category also not all depression glass will glow but most of the depression glass will glow and not not even all antique glass will glow so for example jefferson glass makes a lot of opalescent green glasses that you glassware that you might pick up thinking oh this is definitely going to glow and then you get home and you light a flashlight on it or and it doesn't and then in your head you're like oh this must be a repop but it's not they just didn't use a lot of uranium oxide in their pieces and i saw somebody say they wanted to know why it was used in the first place so what what it was is people use this uranium oxide in the mixture to make the glass in order to obtain these certain sort of colors okay and so it's probably became i mean the germans were using it way back in the day um bohemia also czech the czechs czechs are huge into uranium glass um italians used it the french used it so it, it's been used worldwide for hundreds and hundreds of years but it did probably hit its peak of popularity in, in you know late 1800s up until like 1920 1930 and so obviously a lot of this is based on opinion, but that's to, to what I believe. And, and the thing is, is that I, I always ask the question, I wonder if people knew when they, back then when they had these pieces, if it, if it glowed, did they know that? I don't think that they did, you know, which is kind of what makes it so fascinating to me. Like when I go to an estate sale and I start shining my light on stuff, people are like, whoa, what's going on? And then people want to know, like, is it okay to eat on? And, I mean, most of these pieces have about the same amount of uranium oxide as your granite countertop or your bananas, you know? So, like, and it's funny because I, I started buying it when it, was, when it was, like, really low. Like, everybody thought that glass was in the tank and depression glass especially. So I stockpiled like well over 400 pieces of uranium glass before I even started listing it or researching it. So like at one point, like somebody kind of asked me and they were like, do you think this is okay? And I was like, I looked over and I was like, man, there's like 400 pieces of this stuff in my mom's basement right now. I don't live here, but I mean, maybe, I don't know, but it's okay. It's, it's perfectly fine. Now, one of the questions that popped up when we talked about the, specifically the Vaseline glass, and this was something I hadn't really considered is so rebel junk is saying uh, there are, there's, yellow glass that doesn't glow would that still be considered vaseline glass or by definition is vaseline glass the one with the uranium oxide in it well see technically vaseline glass doesn't have it doesn't necessarily means that it means that it glows vaseline glass is solely referring to the color it just so happens that all of the 90 percent of these pieces in this sort of color glow now you obviously want to have this opalescence in there to to you know show that it glows but the the difference is is that 
a lot of people think of the yellow glass, yellow depression glass. Now there is some yellow pieces of yellow depression glass that will have a slight tint of glow to it, but most of yellow depression glass is not uranium glass or Vaseline glass. It's just yellow depression glass or amber. As some people might refer to it as, but to me, amber and yellow are two different colors. Now I can't see one of the questions. I can't figure out where it went, but uh, the one you're showing with Vaseline also has that white uh, yes. at the top. Is all Vaseline have that white transitional piece or can some of it just be uh, that yellow I, at the bottom? I, I personally think that it's, I mean, <sighs> That's a tough one. There, yes, it can be without the opalescent, but I would say that more than more times than others, you'll see it with opalescence. But yeah, it can be without the opalescence. There's that like I, I have a I, I sold a piece of Jefferson glass, Jefferson glass compote. It was actually kind of a rare piece because most of those pieces that you that they made were opalescent, and this piece was actually not opalescent, but it still glowed. Now, one of the questions that popped up from Michelle at Mermaid Cove Plants and Treasures, I thought was really interesting. And I don't know if you know the answer to this one. When it was originally made, was it designed like depression glass was? Was it designed for the common folk or was it expensive at the time it was made? Per personally, I, I don't I, I don't think so. I think that it, it was more made for uh, um, more expensive than depression glass, for sure. Like that's why depression glass is also... You know the the market for depression glass is always like this like there's certain pieces of depression glass that are worth a lot of money now those pieces are worth a lot of money because there weren't as many of them made or they're pieces that contain parts of them that are easily broken which you know obviously means that more were broken over the years and that some of them will you know that did survive are going to have more value. So these sort of Vaseline glass pieces are more of a high end in comparison, number wise to depression glass. All right. Now this is to prove that in some cases we don't prep a lot in advance. Ooh. I have this piece that uh, Tim has never seen before. And unfortunately the sun's starting to come in. So I know what it is. Right. So my question with this one is it goes back to the question about yellow glass, et cetera. This to me is a, it, and maybe if you see the difference. Yeah. This has this is traditional uranium glass. This I had always thought was Vaseline glass, but now based on what you're saying, I'm wondering if maybe it's not. No, I, I to based on what I see right now, like it has a yellowish enough tint, in my opinion, to be labeled as Vaseline glass. Okay. Now, for a hardcore Vaseline glass collector, they can be very picky sometimes. That's actually I want to say that that's a uh, U.S. A salt open salt made by U.S. glass company. It's definitely an open salt, but I don't know who made it. I don't. I think I it's, I think it's made by, by a U.S. U.S. glass company. I forget the name of it, but I just sold one not too long ago. Yeah, so this is from my personal collection. I have happen to have a collection of of open salts, and oh. so this, this happens to be literally was one of the. It was the only piece of uranium glass I have in my collection. And then when a thrift kitten, uh, uh, nineteen something 1989 she heard we were doing this she sent me this piece as well uh optic uh uranium glass piece because i didn't have one so we could have it but you've got all of your own examples uh, one of the questions and i'm not sure you'll know the answer to this one uh, this comes from one of our viewers in new, new zealand uh, uh nate says tim have you ever heard of english bagley glass yes so i have i've I've sold a couple of um, powder jars by them. So they are, they make exquisite art deco like glass. Like it is really nice. Like, you know, a lot of the, um, there's a lot of American companies that did try to do similar things. Um, you know, like with the, the Cambridge glass, the draped ladies, right? Bagley did a, a lot of those. They do, but it's very, they have these very intricate art deco um, figurine styles and cuts. And they did a lot of um, perfume bottles and trays and flower frogs. Really amazing stuff. Gorgeous. I was going to say before I forget, with your, you have an open salt uh, collection. Harry Humstone just he so I, he's one of these people that I've gotten like he's an old old school glass guy but I've gotten him like revitalized in the glass game and he just bought like 500 pieces of open salt <laughs> and 
<laughs> so you should check his channel out. He's yeah, we'll have to check that out. Now, uh, one of the questions that came up, this is getting maybe a little bit into the minutia of terminology, but it's terminology we all come across. I personally have not heard it referred to as radioactive glass, but is that a term, particularly for yeah. resellers, is that an active term or should they just use the word radioactive? I mean, you can totally use that word as a, as a, as a key word if you like to. I mean, I follow a guy on Instagram who was like one of my like mentors when I first started. Um, his, he lives in Canada. His name is Radioactive Antiques. And this guy has... He has the most amazing uh, uranium and Vaseline glass collection I've ever seen in my entire life. Like he has a museum basically in his house. Like it's, it, I would highly suggest that you follow him on, on Instagram, but like, yeah, every time I try, I found something like I would always shoot that guy a message because it, it was like, you know, I was always trying to find the most like rare, unique, just like stuff that glows. And like, there's so much out there that people don't realize. They just think about depression glass that glows and it's like you're doing we're not even scratching the surface yet like there is just it's it's amazing but yeah you could totally use that me personally i i, I don't use it as often um i i try to stick between like uranium and vaseline glass another one that people like to use too is uv glass because also you have to remember that there's a lot of glass that glows under black light that's not uranium glass like manganese or um I forget how to say the other one, but like that's like the the amber glass that glows orange under a black light. So like it, it gets real deep. So when you start to talk about radioactive glass or UV glass, you start getting into those things as well. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Now this is another one that's popped up. So this one's from Little Something Vintage talking about Vaseline yellow stretch glass that has an iridescent rainbow on it. Yep. Does that so still fall into, is that, would that be considered uranium glass? I mean, so if, 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 if I was to list that, it's funny you say that because a buddy of mine who doesn't know anything about glass, he, he just sent me, I've been helping him with this estate sale in Texas. And it was probably one of the craziest estate sales I've ever seen in my life. And it was carnival glass. It was uranium glass. It was satin glass, stretch glass, everything. But he found they had a Fenton Topaz stretch glass, Vaseline glass, Epern. And I think he got it for like a hundred bucks. And I mean, those things sell for like, you know, five, six hundred dollars. But it's that's literally exactly what this question is in reference to. So me, like I always try to explain this stuff as a reseller also. So what I would do is, is I would list that as, you know, for example, because most of the, this is a, something that I know specifically, it'd be Fenton glass, you know, then it would be Topaz, stretch glass, Vaseline glass. So, you know, it is all of those words, you know, like if you were searching Vaseline glass and that came up, you wouldn't be upset. If you were searching stretch glass and that piece came up, you wouldn't be upset. And the same thing with Fenton glass. Now, the, the, the problem is, is that do you say Vaseline glass and uranium glass in the same sentence or the same title or the same description? I used to and, and until, and then the more and more I, I went along, I kind of decided that it would be better to, to use one in like the title and description and, and just to be consistent. And then if I needed to use keywords, I would say, I would use both. Like for example, in Etsy, you know, you get your tags. So on the tags, I would always put uranium glass, Vaseline glass, because you know, like your, your objective here is to reach the buyer and whether the buyer be searching for Vaseline or searching for uranium, they might not know the difference between the two. So they yeah, might they use them interchangeably. Oh, exactly. Now, one of the questions that came in from Katie at Vintage and Vinyl, she's a detail girl. So this is something I am not familiar with in the case of knowing how much uranium oxide is in there. So the question ends up being is, is this something that they're going off to be tested? Is this something that the manufacturers actually record that it's the idea, the concept that just because it glows doesn't necessarily mean it would be categorized as uranium glass. Have you heard of this? Is this something that you're familiar with? Yeah. So this goes into just the fact that, I mean, this is going to be like that with anything that you want to talk to about, you know, glass or China or, porcelain or anything there's always going to be this like headbutting between like you know different um 
different style of collectors and, and whatnot. So for me, it's like, okay, so the first of all, what they do is, is they're using a Geiger counter, basically. Okay. So, you know, they, there's some people that collect because they, they want to find that piece that is like off the charts on the Geiger counter, you know, and like, that's their, that's their thing. And like, that's cool. You know, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you pick up that piece of glass and be like, ah, I love this. Like, that's awesome. So it's like, for me, I definitely try not to see I, I don't like to see the, like the bickering between the two. Like everybody appreciates a like, in my opinion, this is art, you know, it's art glass. And it's like, somebody is appreciating this piece of art for whatever reason, we shouldn't argue over what the reason is. But there are people that will say that about, you know, uranium glass. And it's just, it's a matter of opinion. In my opinion, Anything that glows, like in order for something to glow, it has to have uranium oxide in it. That's what the chemical that is reactive by the black light or the UV LED black light, which is what I use. And so like, if that's what happens, then that to me is uranium glass. So even though something is Vaseline glass, it's also uranium glass. Now, if I'm selling it and it's an obvious Vaseline glass piece, I'm going to label it Vaseline glass before I label it uranium glass. Now, one of the things that pops up because we're both guilty of this and talking about it, we keep talking about the fact that it glows. So the Kelly Hustle is putting out a question is asking, is there a specific light that should be used? And with depression, is there any pieces worth keeping an eye out for? So, yes. Because I left from Chicago to come to Paducah, I brought my two samples, but I forgot to bring my black light. So I just use a little, it's got the little strap you can turn into a keychain. Mine's just a really cheap, small one I got from Amazon. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you have or what you use? So I use, so actually I'm in the process of of my own the over the years black lights are coming out soon so oh, hopefully awesome. Find yeah. me up. <laughs> so hopefully i'll be using that but the funny thing is it's like you know, i just got one from from the local hardware store it was you know you just want to make sure it is a uv led black light right but see the ones i had like i use my black light so much that like it gets worn out. So like if you watch my videos, you'll see me like banging the the light to make it work, right? And so an awesome person, uh, follow him on Instagram. Uh, his handle I want to say is where the glass where the glass glows. Oh, awesome! Uh, and we will put those these links that we're talking about. We will put those in the uh, notes for this that you can refer to later. I will get those from Tim, and we will add those. So yeah. So he sent me. He reached out and he was like, he sent me a brand new black light that I just used for the first time when I drove to Pennsylvania to go picking on uh, Saturday. So I, I wanted to shout him out because this one's actually pretty cool. Uh, it, it, it takes a battery. Um, the the other the the keychain one that I used at first didn't keep a battery. So this one is like is like the uh, the best one that I really that I really like. But yeah. They, they can come as small as this and then i have one that's a little bit bigger um and then i use that to to do my photographs too like if you have if you really want like i did a video on my channel about how to photograph uranium glass because that's another question i get a lot of the times too so yeah and that's a fantastic video by the way uh so again people that are not familiar with tim's channel uh, over the years, uh, he's on YouTube, he's on Instagram, and he's on all kinds of uh, selling platforms. But some of his YouTube videos are fantastic. And he did, he did a great one of how he photographs because we were talking before we got on, I think, what did you say your number was on Etsy right now? 1,400 pieces? Yeah, I, think I, have, I think I have something around 1,300, 1,400 pieces. On Not all the, uranium, but uh, you know, yeah. so he photographs a lot. And so yeah. he's really good at it. And your and radio Uranium glass. Point out, Tim, I hate to point out, Tim, that my mine is bigger. My <laughs> my, my 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 black light is bigger than yours. So just, <laughs> you can, you can share that. Uh, all right. Um, and I will just echo a little shout out for Jenny that we shouldn't be bickering. Like nobody should be bickering over. And I don't think anyone in the chat is doing so. I think the way Tim explained it was actually beautiful. Just talking about the idea of it's a it's a work of art, something beautiful. Yeah, and, and, and no, like she not to take away from anybody. Like she said, there's absolutely nothing wrong. Like if somebody wants to collect something that only has a certain amount of 
uh, a measurement on the Geiger counter, that's absolutely awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you do to make you fall in love with glass, I'm all for it. Like, I, I have no qualms with what your definition is. You know, like, I just want people to enjoy the art, enjoy the beauty of glass, and, and that's all. But I have to echo Michelle, and I because I do I don't want to like you know go too deep into this. But this is actually a question you mentioned this when you were talking about it, that people that's how they calculate. Because I didn't even know how they would. So that the people that are trying to actually do this for whatever reason that they want that definition is a Geiger counter even something you can just buy? Like are those? Oh okay? yeah, really? Sure. Uh, I had yeah. I had no idea. All right, so I know you've got several other samples that you've got back there. You, you say you started out with Fenton. Now, does Fenton do uranium glass or do they do Vaseline glass? Oh, they do it all. Well, they do it all. Okay. So that's the thing, too. It's like, all right, so before I continue, you have to remember that a lot of uranium glass halted after during the war because they came and they took everybody's uranium away. So there was a long, there's a long gap of where there was no... There was no, um, um, you know, uranium glass being produced because there was no uranium available. And I forgot to mention the rest of the Kelly Hustle's question. Depression glass. Yes, there's definitely pieces of depression glass to be on the lookout for. Um, salt and pepper shakers are always one of the more valuable pieces. Butter dishes are also one of the more valuable pieces. And then you just kind of, when you fall, find a pattern, like, you know, these depression glass comes in all these different patterns, you know? So this is cherry blossom. This is an oval dish. This is actually a, a nice piece as far as value goes. But like a saucer and a cup might not be anywhere remotely close to this one. But there's some plates that are like, it's an inch difference makes like, is the difference between like a $5 cup and like a $60 cup. So it, it's, when it comes to depression glass, there's so many patterns, so many makers, so many shapes, so many colors that you kind of just got you <laughs> just like you just pick it up and you find out. I mean, like I have a ton of books on depression glass, you know, a ton of books. And those obviously those prices change. But what it doesn't change is is the pieces that gives you that real insight on the rarity of it. So if at one point it was worth three hundred and fifty dollars, it's still going to be more valuable than another piece that's worth five dollars in that book because it was that that price to begin with for a reason. So yeah. So back to Fenton. Fenton does before that. We go to Fenton, before we go to Fenton, yeah. I want to uh, circle our kind of circle back because there was another question that I was trying to scroll through and find, but it was kind of related to this one. And it was, since we talked a little bit about the black light, is since we are talking about what to be on the lookout for, is there a way to tell, with particularly when we're getting into depression glass that could glow, I think you've showcased Vaseline is fairly easy to tell. Uranium glass, I think, is could be fairly easy to tell. But when we're getting into some of these other pieces, is there a way to look at a glance with if you don't have a black light with you to know? Not in the beginning. I mean, because I'm, I mean, I'm just to be honest, you could eventually, but like, it, it's, it's tough because, you know, like if you don't, when you start to know, like when you start to find a lot and you get in that groove, you could, you could, you see it and you're like, that's coming home with me. I left my black light at home by accident, but I'm bringing this piece home with me. But it, it, it's really tough. It's just, it's, it's an eye thing. Like, you know, you, you see so much, I, I see so much of it that I know, but every once in a while I get fooled too. And so for example, we were at the flea market, um, the, on uh Saturday and I saw a jadeite shaker from a, like literally oh, like a half a mile away. I saw it. So like, I'm like bolted over there and I get over there and I'm like, it's a reap pro. So like, you know, like, you know, once you get there and you see it, because it just after you've seen so many of them that it, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But like there, there's just there's so many. It's no real way to know unless you've seen a lot of it. And related to that, because I do want to circle back to Fenton, because I, I know you're an expert on that, along with Ma Dukes. But you what you just mentioned, where there's another question that just popped up. So this is kind of two questions are related. So one of them is if it's, if it's uranium glass, is it definitely vintage or are there repros? So you talked about the uh, jadeite that you said was a repro and then kind of related to that because you mentioned that uranium stopped during the war. Did it start back up again as new pieces or were the things after the war all reproductions? 
No, so yeah, they definitely made new pieces for sure. And I mean, like Fenton was one of the more popular companies in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s that was still using uranium glass. Now, there are companies. It, also, this is the funny thing: is like we're in 2020, so 2000 is vintage now. So that kind of like feels weird, but in by 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 definition, it is. So um, they haven't stopped making uranium glass. They still make uranium glass today. And so the thing is, too, is you have to remember about glass. With glass, the molds get passed around so much, you know, and then a lot, especially like back in the day, you know, where like people who worked at Northwood worked at Fenton and people who worked at, who started Fenton worked at another glass company beforehand. Like you had all these small glass companies where people who were makers of glass were just bouncing around, bouncing around and bringing their molds with them and selling their molds to another company. And then a company folds and another company buys those molds. So like with glass, it, it, it becomes super difficult at times. Like it's one of those things where you just like a feel and a touch, like you, the details, you really got to pay attention to the details. Like, um, you know, sometimes when there's a piece that has a, a, a stem base, right? Like on a compote, but it's like a really intricate on, on, on the thing. Like if, if it's hollow, it's probably an original, but if there's glass in between those intricacies on the stem, then it's probably a reproduction. Now, the thing is, is like with jadeite, okay? Most people think of jadeite, they think of, you know, Fire King. Uh, not most people, but I mean, people who are who, who are in love with jadeite. Jadeite is one of those pieces of glass that is done reproduction through the yin-yang, you know, over all these different places and people like you just kind of you, you start to get an, uh, aware of it. But with there's two glass companies, jadeite, that that where their glass would glow. Now, those two companies are going to be McKee Glass and Jeanette Glass. They made jadeite that glows. So, like, you know, this is a McKee Glass uh, refrigerator dish, okay? Now, this is this is this goes into this whole thing of depression glass, uranium glass, Vaseline glass, jadeite. So, this is jadeite, yes, but it's also uranium glass because it glows, you see? So, like, you know, with the newer, what you'll see is a lot of repros of the McKee and Jeanette style shakers and butter dishes. Now those things are, are, are repros. Now they were making glass up to the 2000s too. So will the repros still glow? No, the repros right. will not glow. Now, just because something except for be very aware of the people, there's a lot of people out there that sell this, the blue uranium glass. Now the, Uranium glass can glow in many different colors besides green and yellow. It can grow, it can glow in blue, it can glow in pink, it can, you know, glow on amber. I was really excited to show these amber uh chandelier light art deco lights that I have, but they sold. But like those will glow, but be very careful of the Boyd blue glass because they are they are there's somebody out there that got their hand on the mold and they've been making them. And they will glow. So be very careful of those, just so you know. But this piece right here, this is made in 2000. Now, when you look at this piece, how does it look like? How much does it look like this piece? Right? I, I would not have assumed that that was a reproduction. So, I mean, and, and this glows. You see? This glows. But this was made by Gibson Glass. Gibson Glass is one of those companies that is making this newer uh, uranium glass. Now, this one has a mark on it. It's kind of tough to see, but this one does have a mark on the bottom that says Gibson 2000. So, and that's a crazy thing. Michelle just said it. It's vintage now. When I got this piece, it wasn't vintage. <laughs> so, like, it's but at least they're marking it to be clear. Now, are there companies that are doing it like the Jadeite? I think some of the jade art actually is marked as as reproduction. How, are there companies that are making this type of glowing glass that is doing it specifically to confuse or to try and trick? I, I mean, I'd be I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, like I don't I don't see a lot of it, but I hear rumors of it all the time. And we had George for a very short a very short period of time. Uh, George, unfortunately, through a scheduling issue, he was running his premiere at the same time as our live chat. Uh, so he was just stopping in to say hi, and uh, we will we will catch him at a later time because yeah. both Tim and I are huge fans of George, and it's great spending time. I was I was watching George when George had like two hundred subscribers. 
Yeah, I, I picked him up when he probably had about 700. So, yeah. yeah it's uh, crazy. Like, I remember watching one of his first videos, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. He's in the antique mall, like, breaking it down. I'm just like, this is – this is I, I live for this right now. So, yeah, he, he's a cool dude. I'll just say doing shopping with him at antique stores this week have been – this weekend was amazing <laughs> because you literally just turned around like, Hey, George, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> he knows it all. I uh, want to be sensitive on time. And one of the questions, which I yeah, just found it uh, for, from Lorianne sugar Bridges, what is your Holy grail item? I mean, I, I don't really have a Holy grail item, right? As far as specifically uranium and, and, and uh, Vaseline glass, I mean, I would love to find a really intricate pern. That would be definitely one of my favorites. And some of the, the Art Deco glass, like for me, the Holy Grail is something that nobody's seen before. Like I want that piece of uranium glass that nobody's seen before. Like I found some, some crazy stuff before. Like, you know, like this... I got. I went on an antique lighting warehouse hoarder pick, and I found. I'm talking about lamps, lamp shades, chandelier shades, Italian, French, like all types of crazy stuff. So, like for me, that's the grail. I mean, I would love to find outside of uranium vaseline glass. I'm looking for an authentic Galet cameo glass vase. That's oh, one of my like. Yeah. Because I found. I will tell you. Oh, I should have brought that with me. So real quick. I was at a Russian or Greek Orthodox church rummage sale with Josie and I found this little glass and they wanted, and I, I saw that it glowed and, and like, I, I, I picked it up and I was like, they wanted 10 cents for it. And I was like, I mean, it glows. I'm taking it home. Right. So I, I was sitting on my, on my table that this is when I was stockpiling uranium glass. So it was sitting on my table and I was like, man, Ah, I, I just got to figure out what this is. And I just couldn't, I couldn't make out the signature. Like it just was so like intricate. The signature it was just so difficult. And so, you know, I was still learning at this time as I am now. And so I was watching antique uh, roadshow with Josie and this woman brought like these three pieces of galley up and the guy starts talking about it. And I look at the signature and I'm like, no. And I go, I run, get in the car, go to my house. I pick up the piece and I'm like, oh, this is a galley piece. So, yeah, so I did find a galley, like really early, early galley piece, like, you know, late 1800s. It's a nice little like shot glass posy vase sort of thing, uh, gold paint on it and signed on the bottom. Uh, so, but yeah. Did galley cameo glass, did that, did that glow? I didn't know he ever did that with uranium. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. It yeah. wasn't cameo. It wasn't cameo glass. Oh, it wasn't cameo glass. Okay. I thought that. I thought that's all that Galley did. <laughs> that, no, no. He he. This is this is like that's what I'm saying. Like this is a really, really early Galley. Early. But he also designed furniture too. Yeah. He Excellent. did all types of stuff. But yeah, something like this. Like this is a, a, a lampshade, custard glass. But like you know, a lot of people are gonna see this, and, and, and like if you're out shopping, right? All the stuff that I find is obtainable. Trust me. Like. Just you just got to sometimes you got to open your eyes and, and make sure you look behind pieces, you know, and just like don't be ashamed to walk down the, the aisles or the or the flea markets with your light like that. I mean, you know, like it, it's how you find stuff sometimes. But like this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, this glows. Gorgeous piece of glass that glows. And like for me, I like pieces like this, you know, very unique pieces. Now, related to the, the search, and you're talking about, you know, don't be afraid to pick them up. Can you just give kind of an idea? Are we talking about a $10 risk, a $20 risk? What do you typically see these prices selling for in a, whether it's an antique mall or a vintage shop, you know, versus not a rummage sale, because those are going to be harder to come yeah. by in general, or what's on your shop? Like what, what kind of price ranges are we in? For my Etsy shop, I mean, like I have pieces of uranium glass that are $10. But I have pieces of uranium glass that are five, six hundred dollars. You know, it's just like it, it all depends on the, the rarity of the item, the uniqueness of the item. Like, you know, like this Fenton piece right here. You you can find this all the time, you know. These are, are two Fenton pieces, the same exact pattern, panel daisy, right? This one is what they call lime satin. This one is just your regular custard satin. Um, now these won't have markings on the bottom because Fenton only started marking their glasses with signatures after like 74, I think, but this one has a Fenton sticker in it, but both of these pieces will glow. 
So you have your green satin glass that'll glow, and you have your regular custard satin glass to glow. Not all custard satin glass will glow, especially within the Fenton line. So you, sometimes you can kind of hold it up. You can see a tint of yellow, a tint of green in there. Now that is like the the stuff that you can, you know, these are the pieces that you can definitely find out there. Now, I mean, I sold these pieces for anywhere from 10 to $25. So, so, you know, like, but you can find them for a dollar, five dollars and place like that. Now, when it comes to antique malls, I'll tell you, antique malls, I hate, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like a bad guy, right? But when I go shopping at an antique mall, I try to find the pieces of Vaseline and uranium glass that the person who's selling it has no idea that it's Vaseline and uranium glass. Bottom line, like. I've got this at an antique mall. This is what I call tango glass. Well, not necessarily what I call. It's an actual, you know, category of glass uh, made popular uh, by the Czech, I believe. But like, you know, there's this really gorgeous applied uh, handles right here. And it's got this blue trim up here. Now, somebody had this in their antique booth for like 10 bucks. So I, I saw it immediately and I was like, that bad boy definitely glows. And like, it is like, glows glows like it is a beaut right there and so i think i have this up for like two three hundred dollars right now so it's like you know th that's how you in antique malls if you're if you're hunting to to resell that's just that's part of the game you have to you, that's which it's hard to find stuff that is you know what i'm saying you know somebody just said they recently found four uranium shot glasses for 50 cent each and they sold for 50 dollars shot glasses do really well in uranium and then like stuff like this too. A lot of not not all people who sell this sort of stuff know that it glows. This is Northwood glass. Um, I want to say Louis the Thirteenth is the pattern. Now this is old. This is this is late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds right here. And so this stuff right here, this glows. Not a lot of people know that, you know. But that's that's how that's how you have to find the stuff. Like look at that. It is like, you know, it is just glows. It's gorgeous. So. I mean, and then there's so many different pieces. Like, I just picked this up at, on Saturday at the Antique Mall. This is actually, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this is actually a super, in my opinion, rare piece. This was made by a glass company called Clouder Sport. They only made glass. They were Clouder Sport was based in Pennsylvania. They only made glass for four years. And so this is like, 1900 to 1904 this is a salt shaker right here and this bad boy glows so crazy and i've got it on saturday at the antique mall for four dollars that's so fantastic i also yeah. say i with the echoing on the uh, custard glass it was actually it was either i have to admit it was either your video or might have been scott's video uh from old curiosity shop that i didn't realize the custard could glow and so oh, I had a piece of custard glass that I had no idea. And I watched one of the videos and I grabbed my little, my little uh, glass or my little uh, blue light. And all of a sudden that puppy glowed and it was amazing. I ended up, I was oh. selling it at the time and I ended up did sell it, probably sold it for less than it was worth, yeah. but it was a piece of thirties enamel with some enamel flowers on it. The, to me, the deck the decor was the flowers. And so it was watching, you know, learning from things like this, learning from these deep dives or learning just watching other people's videos you can't know everything you and can. uh you know picking it up picking up little tips like that suddenly makes uh something like how do you know if something's a 40 dollar piece or a 400 dollar piece you really just have to kind of have to play along and figure it out and that's the thing too is like so i'll show you guys a couple of these last pieces before we go but i also want to let everybody know that the thing is is uranium glass i'm telling you right now i've been preaching this for a long time this is why like for me it's like it's like playing as stocks like i bought every piece of glass that i could find that glowed i bought it all and i just kept stockpiling it now i i, I for example i'm in i'm in a facebook group for uranium glass right and now one day they did they did like a survey it say where you're from and the age and i the the average age was like 28 to to like 35 and i was i was blown my mind was blown i was like this is what i have been predicting this crossover appeal to a younger generation to get them excited about glass and if it's if it takes it to glow to get them excited to under to understand and appreciate it then i'm all for it so it's like you know i'm telling you right now if it glows buy it 
because it that's just that's my motto i mean it might might not work for everybody else but i sell so much i've sold over 300 pieces of uranium glass by just just uranium and vaseline glass over 300 pieces and it's like i every week if you watch my channel every single week every weekend i put out a video of what's sold i'm selling uranium glass i'm selling vaseline glass that's one of my staples you know like my most my most uh, biggest sellers are you know uranium glass pyrex and, and jasperware right now you know like those are like my three pyrex and uranium glass are always hot sellers for me but also the pyrex is more so because i was in um bon appetit magazine they did a write-up on my etsy store so like that kind of put me on the map a little bit too but like there's so there's so many pieces like this one too so i know you got the mini one like the intricacy of this piece, this is Cambridge glass, like the dolphin. And, you, and Patrick was talking about it earlier today on his live. But like you find a piece like I got this at the thrift store for $2.99. And this piece is listed for $75 right now. You know, it, it, it's crazy. I mean, and then like you find pieces like this. Like look at this. This is about as art deco as, as it gets. Now these are, you can use them as a wall sconce. Um, they also go inside of uh, chandeliers on the top, but like this is more of a like this this is more of a yellow than it is amber, but it is it is close to amber, and this glows, you know, and, and it glows gorgeous. And those are the pieces that you really got to look out for too. Is this think outside the box, and then you have like this is like Fenton from like you know, this is probably mid 80s fenton but this glows and it's a darker green darker greens can glow too don't be afraid of the of the uh the emerald greens you'll see a lot of depression glass in those emerald greens those those elegant uh etched glass that that glows it's it's insane i mean i picked this up at auction for two dollars and fifty cents on thursday this is northwood klondike vaseline glass two dollars and fifty cents i got this for you know and now i'm in a room full of 50 people who think that glass is no value anymore. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But for me, I sell, I sell so much glass and especially pieces like this, because I'm telling you, I feel like the guy who does the stock market show with the bull and the red button right now. Like that's how I'm trying to tell you guys about Vaseline uranium glass. Like it's, it, it, it is growing every single day in popularity and it's going to continue growing it, it, it it's a good thing not just because i sell it but i want people to accept you know understand that this is not just something that like you know older people do or you know like collectors do it is a lot for a newbie trust me but like this is a thing is like if if you follow like the whole vintage YouTube world doesn't even really know who I am. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Like 90% of my subscribers on my channel are other resellers. And you should see the excitement of these people for glass. Like I have people and, and like I, I owe them so much. The name of my Etsy shop is over the years, but I owe that community so much because they've taught me how to become a better reseller. They taught me how to expand. Like, you know, so now I'm buying hats, like how I was buying uranium glass, because that's the next big thing I'm seeing. And even Patrick bought a hat. But like to I see these people, they they pay attention, they listen, and they're excited to learn. And and when I get these messages from people who are like, Tim, I bought my first piece of uranium glass. And then like three days later, they're like, Tim, I sold my first piece of uranium glass. Like nothing makes me more happier than that. Knowing that like somebody was able to take what I told them, apply it and succeed. Like to me, it's like if you have you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't share your knowledge with everybody else, your knowledge is worthless. And so like that's how I live my life. And I, I'm just I'm excited. Like I give passionate. Sorry if I'm like rambling, but I get really passionate about no, this. No, this is perfect. And you've actually put us in a great spot to be able to finish. It's it's these types of Deep, the, the whole idea behind the deep dive is I'm a relatively new reseller. I have an Etsy shop that just opened in October. So I'm relatively new to this. I've always collected, I've always had different collections, but getting into doing this as a, it is a side hustle for me. I'm like Tim who does this full time. I, you know, I just kind of dip my toes in areas that I find interesting and it's totally self-serving. When I do these deep dives, 
I'm picking people that I think will be one interesting to be on air, but also topics that I want to learn more about because I had a piece of custard glass that I did not know glowed, you know, so I was able to fix that before I actually sold it. But what if I hadn't done that? You know, it's, it's, you don't know what you don't know. And I think it was vintage collectibles who commented that this is so much to take in trust. You are not alone. We are yeah. all in the same boat. Tim would have I'm, I'm in the same boat. other areas. You know, he you might know be super that. knowledgeable about uranium glass and Vaseline glass and Fenton. And as I we went down a rabbit hole, never got you know back to the circle back on Fenton. But he's got a great video on Fenton that he did with my Dukes. Go watch it. Uh, but any of these things, you can't be an expert on everything. Huh. And so don't ever hesitate. You may have missed the very beginning. Ask the questions. I, I, I know Tim because I reached out to him. I didn't know who he was. And I asked him a question. I'm like, hey, you just talked about this in one of your videos. Is this like, is this what I think it is? Or do you know what this is? It, one of the things that I can't underscore enough is the idea that these molds moved around so much that it does, it makes it very hard. And some of them were done res respectfully or responsibly so that the second company either made that sort of modification or something, but other times you don't know. And so you see something and you got your books. We all, I, I also kind of, I'm trying to build a, a book collection. You see something like, okay, I just saw this in a store. Or I just saw this in a thrift store. I just bought this, but it's not quite the same. Like, there's something different. You're not going to know it all. And so, and to sit there and just put your head in the sand and say, well, I'm not going to know it all. So it's not worth knowing, or I'm not going to try. I'm going to make mistakes. I bought all kinds of stuff that I've sold at a loss that I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to sell it to get rid of it, to make room in my inventory because I thought it was something special and it wasn't, but I didn't know until I got it and I did the research and you, you figure things out. So we've hit the hour. I really appreciate everyone joining uh, the chat. There's some great questions. There's a bunch of questions that did not get answered. So I do apologize, but I was trying to keep us on somewhat of a, a direct thread. Uh, yeah, but I encourage, reach out to Tim. Yeah, reach out to me. Like I, I'm I'm like one of the most easily accessible people like like around. So like- Your don't Instagram ever have is over the, over the years collecting? Yeah, so over the years collecting is all of my glass in China and- and um you know the antique and, and more side of things and then over the years ebay is more of my like my vintage clothes and hats and things like that so uh so you can follow him over the years uh collecting, collecting. very glass um i'm always available at th mercantile or trusty huckster mercantile and i'll put the links again in the uh in in the the comments or in the uh, description of the video once it once it goes live as uh, so well try and i'll also try and put some of the links of the instagram uh, pay channels that he mentioned that we should be following so again i thank you all for joining us i super thank you shout out to tim for being here and giving me giving me your time I'm, I'm humbled and honored that you would give me your time to do this because you're so knowledgeable and i really appreciate you coming onto my channel i've i've scrolling across the bottom if you're not a subscriber to tim you can find him on youtube at over the years instagram over the years collecting uh, and if you happen to be here maybe because you follow tim and you jumped onto my channel you're not familiar with me again patrick with trusty huckster mercantile you found my youtube channel so if you made it this far and you're not a subscriber i'd really appreciate you smashing the subscribe button that's really worth it I got over, I've, I've now bumped over 600, so I'm a much smaller channel than Tim, uh, but I love putting out this type of content. I'm really excited that so many people joined it. So again, thank you to Tim. Thanks to all of you. Wishing you a good night and thank you for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Have a good night. Bye-bye.